everyone welcome back to the workbench and today we're going to take a look at one of dad's locomotives which has developed a kind of fault probably saw the O2 working with the Hatton's Genesis coaches uh, posing as an Isle of Wight engine now uh, she was a wheels kit that dad built some time ago and she will have the Airfix 1001 motor in her big open frame jobby but the problem that's occurred is that after a bit of running she gradually slows down and gets slower and slower and slower and the current goes up and she is quite a high current user as well she ran about 400 milliamps whereas these motors ideally run around 200 so I'm suspecting that the magnet will need recharging with the magnet recharger um, but what also obviously is happening is that heat is building up and causing something to get tighter and tighter so we need to open her up and have a look and see what that might be and uh, I thought you might be interested to join me in this um, investigation so we've got to open her up and uh, I believe that that is the body releasing screw there so I'm going to go ahead and unscrew that and we'll have a look inside and that was the screw as you can see, relatively simple inside. We've got uh, 40 to 1 gears, the yeah, FX1001 5 pole motor. How strong is that magnet? Let's have a feel with something. Oh, yeah, bit pathetic. So, that will ha absolutely be the reason for the high current. And if we reduce the amount of current drawn, then things shouldn't get so warm so quickly and that may resolve the heating problem that's occurring so it looks like we need to do a full service on this Airthix 1001 motor and we'll get it out of the engine which is simply that screw at the back there and we can also test to make sure that the engine's free running as well so I'll just release the motor from the chassis okay back on the Leica so the motor's out and uh, let's see it's got some power, but it's just not very good. But the chassis is actually quite stiff. And uh, that may be down to the pickups, which I can see. You'll see, and if I turn it around the other way, Dad has used strips of copper up against the backs of the wheels. It comes to about there. And they can be quite stiff, so... I think it's just a case of easing them back but we'll do the motor service then come on to the chassis all right these motors beautifully easy to service as we all know so we'll just squeeze the brush retaining spring and release both brushes we'll try to release that brush it seems to be a bit reluctant there he goes so plenty of meat on them as you can see and there's a nut on the back of the motor and a screw on the top. We're going to need to take that out ready for remagnetizing. Got that in there firm. And we can withdraw the screw. Very difficult to try and keep this in camera. Now what we don't do is take the magnet out of the motor because it will immediately lose its power. So we're going to re-magnetise it in the motor frame. So let's get the magnetizer out. Right, there's the re-magnetizer. Um, not the most exciting process really in the book. You can see I've previously worked out that uh, 1001s need to go this side, so that north's that way, and the XO4s are the opposite. All we do is we make a gap Now the motor's within the poles, and then it's just, I do two three second presses. And that should be him. Oh yeah, you can always tell that it's, uh, yeah, 
plenty of power now. Now just check that the top should be north. So we've got a compass there. Make sure it's showing. So let's do it. There we go. Top north, pointing to the red one. If we turn it the other way itself. That's how the compass works. You will send this a thousand times, but we clean the commutator segments with a sharp cocktail stick. Then we use a cotton bud, some IPA to polish up the commutator. We never, ever, ever scrub the commutator with anything rough. All right, there are a couple of little bits that some people tend to forget when cleaning these older motors. And that is to do with the brush retaining spring. The pickup from the um, chassis side, the negative or cold side, comes through the, the wire. So you need to get a bit of wet and dry and just polish it up where it touches the brush because muck and um, corrosion will build up there. See it's coming up shiny compared with what it was. And you want that to be a brilliant conductor. Concentrate on the inside face of course. The other point to do with the brush spring where you want it good conduction is at this end where it goes on the bolt on top of the motor. You want it clean there, there and on inside as well. Inside the loop guys because it relies on the head of the screw that um, holds the magnet in making good contact there and going down into the body there we are, it's nice and shiny, so that's that done now exactly the same for the brushes the point where the spring presses, which is in there needs to be cleaned up easy to do, just fold your bit of wet and dry over and give it a good polish. Be surprised how bright it will become. Uh, there's a before and after for you. So there it is before I do it. And there it is polished up. That's what you want. Two points on the motor to do. The first one, again if you just hold your wet and dry down is underneath the bolt that goes through the motor and holds the magnet in and also is the point of conductivity to bring the earth side of the mechanism so you want that nice and clean where it contacts the spring that we've just cleaned up and the other point two points really is the securing lug. Both sides of that need to be polished up. Because that is where the screw comes through from the body and again is the way that the chassis side of the um, circuit comes through. And lastly the little screw himself which is there, so I'm not going to bore you showing you that, but I will just use the wet and dry as well, just to polish him up. That's the motor done, uh, so we've recharged the magnet, we've cleaned all the connections, drop of oil on the bearings, uh, clean the brushes, clean the commutator, that's ready to go back in, but let's have a look at that chassis now, and see if we can loosen things okay, up. It's actually quite easy to do. The um, pickup strips start here, where they're soldered on, and uh, go to about there under the wheel where they fold over a little bit to make a, 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 a place for it to rub so I just used a screwdriver and pushed down here to ease them back and now we have a nice free running chassis so that should stop her getting hot as well uh, but I've been careful to make sure that the pickups do still work and you can see that they're working because they spring the wheels over Let's put her back together and we'll uh, get her running and take a current measurement and see how she's doing. Okay, she's on the track all together. Let's try.
I notice we've got a little bit of a stiff wheel there, I don't know why, that's something to check out as well. Not far off being correct, is it? And she's still drawing, well, we're down to 300 now, let's see if I can get that in shot. That's a current draw. So all that remains to do is just to ease that little wheel and uh, then she'll be ready for a test downstairs and give her a long run see what happens um, and perhaps might even make her feature in a video for you. Hope that's been of interest, stay tuned for more very soon. So I wasn't satisfied with the way the motor was run, it's still drawing too much current but what I discovered was when the magnet was hard up against the back plate it was actually impeding the turning of the armature because it, the bearing sticks right the way through. So I've had to pull the magnet right back, make a couple of card shims that will go in between the magnet and the back plate to ensure that there is a little bit of back and forward movement. Should improve things. We'll put it on the current meter in a minute. That's more like it. Whole thing was cooking itself. No um, back and forward movement at all on the bearing with the magnet rammed in. That piece of tape there is just to keep a bit of card in. There's one on both sides with a slot cut so that it can't interfere with the bearing. Ah, I wonder how long that's been like that. 